Well, this is a special meeting of the board, and at uh, this time I'd like to call the board meeting to order. And um, we will start with the uh, traditional Pledge of Allegiance. So I'll join me with the pledge. All right. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so what do I need this one here? It's my thing freaking out there. Okay. Uh, all right, so it's like we have uh, all board members present, Dr. Clark and uh, Tracy as well. Uh, so we're a uh, virtual meeting. We won't, uh, won't be having any uh, public comments at this time. And um, we've just got a few short agenda items to go through here, board business. So uh, Next up, we have our vision and mission statement. Our vision is our community inspires and prepares each student to thrive. Our mission is in connection with our communi community. The Squim School District empowers staff to inspire hope and provide flexible, innovative learning opportunities in a safe and respectful environment so each student thrives. All right, so. First up on our agenda, we have a um, discussion uh, regarding uh, our EPO and capital projects levies. Okay, it's, it, it, it is just the capital projects levy. Okay. I'm going to talk yeah. about the EPO levy at a later date. Okay. Um, my goal with this is to kick this out to the board and, and get their feedback. And then I want to start taking it out to the community in various forums. I, I haven't really decided what that's going to look like. I, I was hoping he'd be on the call today. I was going to talk to Mike DeShield about getting an article in the newspaper middle to the end of October, because I do not want to confuse people and uh in regards to that this will be a november something on the november election so but we're going to have to have our ballot title and all of that done you know sometime middle of december first part of december so you know we're it, we're getting to the point where we have to be making some decisions mm -hmm. And what, what I've done to this point is I've started, uh, I started with the list that was left over for when the capital projects levy was ran in 2017 uh, in regards to building the uh, food service facility and a couple of other things. These were the other, th other items, other construction things that were talked about and kicked around as far as doing. And there, if you, if you look at this spreadsheet, um, you know, it has the building or the district and, uh, you know, or if it's a district thing, for example, in, uh, and the original estimate that John McCandy provided and I have, I'm working with a construction management company and they, uh, they came out to the campus a couple different times and they've made some different estimates. And this it would, um, so for, and, and I use this as an example. When they looked at the roof replacement for Gray Wolf, Three, four years ago, it was estimated to cost five five hundred k. The estimate now is is uh, near six seven hundred. Might as well say seven hundred k. 
and you know intercom clock replacement uh somewhere in the neighborhood of you know a hundred thousand the heat system emergency and EMS upgrade a million dollars. Uh, they estimated it to be 966. The sewer connection we're estimating to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 255 to 300. I do want to say this, and we also have to look at these tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, because we have to put the put these in the year that we want them done. So a tier one would get done. If we pass the ballot measure, a tier one issue would get done uh, in this the in this in the year 21. Uh, no, excuse me, 22. We would start receiving monies in 2022. So these, whatever was in tier one would get done in uh, the, uh, the year 2022, and then tier two, tier three, there would be no tier four. Tier four, the only thing that there would be for a tier four would be if it was a smaller project and we said, okay, if it's a $200,000 project and there's money left over after we do the tier one, tier two, and tier three projects, we would hit a tier four project. So these are, are the issues at uh, Gray Wolf. I, um, I'm going to pass on Haller for a minute, and I'm going to come back to that. You see Squim Middle School roof replacement. Uh, we did, you know, some of that. Uh, this, but there's there's a lot more to do. Roof recoat on the gym. Uh, gym floor, a small replacement. Uh, floor repair in the cafeteria. Again, small. The intercom clock, those are things, the EMS upgrade, electronic debt, that will be at every building. Um, the heating system replacement at the high school, classroom upgrade and modernization for science and, uh, um, you know, uh, CTE, somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars, intercom clock replacement. We need to replace the gym floor and the cafeteria floor, electronic locks, and entry system. Now, the other thing is, let's go back to Haller before we go to OPA. These numbers are still being refined by the estimator, and I have another these are pretty solid estimate, but here are some of the big issues at Haller. You know, the fire alarm system, intercom clock replacement, fire sprinklers, kitchen remodel, electronic locks, and again, a sewer connection. The question I have, and this is where I want to talk about uh, this, and then we, excuse me, and then now let's go down to OPA. Um, you know, they have a, uh, a lot of work to be done with, a, and some of this stuff, gym roof, recoat, intercom. One of the things that you may or may not know, to, uh, know is that the band and the choir room are not hooked up to the high school in regards to phone systems and, and fire alarms and, and those type of things. Gym heat system, EMS upgrade, a fence, paving the parking, water and sewer connection. And then there's some district issues in regards to security cameras, lock system, phone system, paving, 
And, and one of the things that I've talked about, that this is a new addition to the uh, to John's list, and that is that we have a warehouse facility built, a pole building on, and it would be on land owned by the school district that would be southwest of the middle school gym because we don't we have no storage district wide we if, if you and this is one of the issues that i think we need as far as looking at the grounds the truck the mower deck the irrigation pumps station i'm taking those off we can take care of those through our general operating budget over time we need to replace the track. The track, if you walk on it, I encourage you to go out there. There are holes in it. It is, it has not been um, resurfaced for at least 20 years. And our conference will not schedule home meets on our track. And then I think we also have an issue with our stadium restrooms. So those are the things that I have, but part of this conversation, and I wanna see where the board is, and I'll, I'll finish up with this. It's my goal, or I want it to be our goal when we start this process, is that we take care of, in the capital projects levy, all of the, small issues, and some of them aren't that small. So as in three years, the district runs a bond issue to build a new elementary school. And we look at doing it on the site of where the community school existed. That is, and, and I think that's what I've been talking about for the last several months. So one of the issues that I have is if in fact that's what we want to do, the question comes up of how much money do we want to put into Haller because, and or OPA because I would see one of the things that I, I believe the district would want to do would be to move OPA to the best functioning classrooms of the Haller campus and to remove them from the portables at OPA. That would be with the potential exception of the choir and the band. And um, that's kind of where and I've had two meetings with our committee after I'm after the board goes through this and we have this conversation. I plan on having another meeting with the committee committee and start going out to the community. So those are my thoughts. Those are my ideas. I would like to get the board's take on this situation. Mr. Chair. All right, so I'll lead off um, and then if we could just uh, uh, as, as we go through, um, get everybody a chance to uh, participate here. Um, I, as far as all the items, you know, these are items we've been talking about for years. Uh, some of them been on our bond issues in the past and and, and definite needs. Uh, as far as the the Haller OPA conversation, um, yeah, I, I would. It, it, my my thoughts are definitely, you know, looking at those issues at Helen Howard because it still is a functioning school in in some format uh, with with some good classes and availability and and uh, you know we had talked about this in the past as well potentially just moving uh, OPA over into that into that area so uh, I, I think definitely mm -hmm. focusing on the the uh, those main issues over at Helen Haller to be able to make it a functioning uh, school for 
whatever whatever that purpose is in the future if it's opa if we you know look at any other i mean some other conversations have come around of you know divvying up our our um uh our grade levels uh and and moving those around uh in, into different campuses it's still a uh, functioning campus just not the best functioning campus but with some modifications so uh, other than that uh, you know i think everything else looks uh um looks looks pretty good um it would be interesting to hear the you know kind of final newer numbers on these things and then and then you know definitely looking at our um our uh you know tiers at at where we uh where we put those items um as they as they come up that's that's my thoughts uh um i'll just do round robin uh um director jeffries what are your thoughts Yeah, um, I agree. These have been talked about for quite a while, and um, they haven't been uh, addressed for whatever reason. Um, are there, well, I guess a couple questions I would have. I noticed like the fire alarm system at Helen Haller, I, is that critical? I mean, it's put off till tier two. It's a functioning school. And we have kids and adults in those buildings. Do we have any kind of fire alarm system there that works? Will it suffice, or do we need to maybe move that up and get that repaired as soon as possible? And I guess I would look at any other um, <clears throat> critical needs, possibly. Um, like well, a roof replacement at Gray Wolf, that might mean it's time, but it, the roof is okay. But I like a roof replacement at the middle school might not be as okay. I mean, it may be in more of a critical need for some reason. So we need to take a look at how we balance those kinds of funds. So I guess looking at it from a critical need point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so as we got heat. Heating system upgrades, given what's going on with the coat, co um, are we talking just uh, heaters and blowers? Or are we talking an HVAC system with ventilation that we could filter air into the building? The second one. Quite a bit more. HVAC systems. Okay. How about the fire alarms at um, Helen Haller? Um, I believe they work, but they aren't as functional as they need to be. And I, I, I need to double check on that. I, I want to be very careful how I address that because I need to be yeah. sure. I, I think what I hear you saying, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Director Jeffries, what your concern about is not necessarily the projects but where they are in the tiers. Uh, yeah, correct. If Because um, I know there's a reality of how much money and when we get it, but are there critical needs out there that we need to, address, we need to get addressed first? Sure, for as opposed health to later. And safety, health and safety of the students. Okay. And I will spend some time on that. Okay. Thank yeah. You. And I, I, sorry. Sorry if I wasn't. That's that's exactly what I was trying to say earlier, uh, Director Jeffries. Is reevaluating re all those tiers and making sure that those are in the right area. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks for kind of putting that in better words. <laughs> um, Director uh, Koo. All right, thank you. Um, first question, and slap my hand if this is a little too asking too much. I'd love to get a copy of just the spreadsheet, um, just so I can go in and kind of tabulate and get a better sense. I mean, I guess I, do, I guess we do have subtotals there, so um, maybe that's not entirely I, necessary. I, I, I anticipate getting a new spreadsheet on Monday or Tuesday, so I will I will forward you the new updated spreadsheet. That'd be great. Thank you. And. Um, 
There oh, is sir. one. I just to real, and I didn't want to inundate you. I do have a spreadsheet as 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 that's a hundred. Uh, Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong. It's 129 pages, and it breaks down all these into specific costs. So, but I'm going to forward you about a five-page spreadsheet, not the 129 pages. <laughs> That sounds perfect, and I think it's a good way to articulate that that thin line that we uh, try to toe as a board. So thank you. Um, I, I agree with Larry. You know, just in uh, kind of the prioritization and primacy, given you know my personal bias, uh, I would note you know obviously critical repairs, uh, like a hole in the roof. That's something that absolutely has to be done. Um, but very shortly behind that is safety items uh, for our students. And that just goes back to, you know, pre-COVID efforts and dialogues that we've had around student safety. Um, and I guess to that question, too, in, in talking about the tiers, and perhaps I'm understanding this wrong, but if we were to successfully, excuse me, when we successfully pass a capital projects levy, um, aren't we able to bond against that? And while there's a cost of, you know, getting those funds up early in terms of interest. Um, I guess the question I would have is what's our temporal capacity if we were to push everything up um, and or, um, you know, hedging against those significant lifts. You know, the roof replacement, I think, was a great example. Uh, we talked about a two year timeline and the project increased by 30 uh, percent. Um, which is obviously a lot less than we would pay in interest. So th that's where my mind is, and I'd love to get any feedback on that. Um, and then I guess the final question um, would be just a, a discussion, or if, if it's already happened, that's great, but a discussion around, you know, things that are important, but I think we may all agree at the end of the day are, you know, probably lower on the priority list in terms of criticality. Um, would be you know the gym floor replacement i i understand that thing's hard as a rock uh we need a new gym floor period but um you know that that pales in comparison to a security or a critical repair item uh the track replacement i agree it is uh you know an abysmal condition um you know things like that are is that where maybe we could look at dare i say sponsorship or philanthropic avenues um, because those those have been conversations that uh, a number of us have received from uh, the public. And so I, I would venture to guess, you know, there's interest there to some degree, um, you know, which could include honorary naming uh, or, or anything like that. So um, leave it to the former banker to, to, to ask the tacky question. But those are the thoughts I'm having. All right, great. Thank you, uh, um, uh, Director Stoffer. Yes, hi, thank you. Uh, I like uh, the list. I like the uh, um, moving the uh, stadium restrooms and track replacement uh, to a higher priority. Um, and concur with uh, colleagues there about the the lens of safety and health, because um, a lot of these items, well, were uh, from those discussions before. And so, if that's if we look at it that way, and then if um, the non-voter secured debt gives us an option of. Uh, gathering funds um, to start work. And so if that could be on a further discussion or that we would identify under those urgent repairs type thing, that these are the ones that uh, we would really need to, we really need to start the work on um, sooner than later type thing. Um, and I like the idea of uh, some, uh, donations also to help uh, um, offset some of this and that that could be a very good message out there. Um, on the OPA, um, the water sewer connection, I know that's that's pretty critical because uh, those kids there, um, they don't have 
or, or help me with this. I believe they don't have running water um, bathrooms inside the portables. And so then they use the facilities that are inside next to the band and choir room. And so being able to have a connection um, directly for them is a big plus. And then I know the, the heating and cooling system there for those band, that band and choir room has been a, a challenge um, for many years. So from there, I um, thank you, Superintendent. Um, Dire Director Stoffer, I, I will say this, you are correct that there are not restrooms and or running water in the portables, but there are two sets of restrooms. There are one next to the choir room, a men's and women's, and there are also a men's and women's in the gymnasium. Thank you. Yes, just are the kids from the, our kiddos from OPA, they transit in to use those, correct? Yes, both, both sets of restrooms. Yes. Um, and then when I'm when I'm looking at anything that has network, um, that kind of needs to be all done together to connect everything back to the district. Is that correct? That is correct. So that's um, pretty high priority because we don't want to piecemeal this. We want to. Um, and I remember uh, our technology guru Bo giving us a a, a very robust presentation back in January, I think, when we were first talking. And our, our the construction manager, there we're working with a firm called Ednetics, and uh, that's who the, and uh, they have worked with, I don't know about worked with Bo, but I want to say consulted with Bo in regards to that situation. Okay, thank you. And then uh, a maintenance building for the maintenance staff because yeah they've been working out of they don't have any storage and so I like the, also the idea of using that land that we do own there southwest of the middle school because that's always a topic of conversation of having land and so I would uh, support all this so thank you for putting this together and director Piggins um yeah, definitely uh, prioritizing safety and security of the students. Absolutely, when I think about electric blocks and the system and and all of those type systems, I um, want those to be a priority. Specific to the question about the Helen Haller, um, that that seems to make sense to me um, about uh, that that prioritization. So, um, what I might also welcome. Maybe not on all the items, but I would welcome potentially uh, a time where we could um, maybe as as a board just uh, just heck a uh, take a tour of some of these uh, facilities where yourself and whomever you determine, Dr. Clark could we could go through at least some of these bigger ticket items so we can just get a uh, get a sense live right in the uh, the spot if that's permissible under and that that would make that would make a tremendous amount of sense and and I I'm hoping you know knock on wood, the coronavirus situation, that that's something that we could do in early October. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd say I, that. I, and, and, I, I, and, and at, then even at a later date to bring the community in and, and, you know, some of these things are, are really, you know, easy to see others aren't. And I know the one thing, you know, we're talking about safety and security and I, I'm in complete agreement with that assessment, but probably if you ask me what our most urgent need is, I would probably tell you the sewer system at Haller and the sewer system at Gray Wolf. When you have sewage backing, last week we had sewage backing up into the kitchen at Haller. And we know what the problem at Gray Wolf was last uh, yep. spring. When, when you have sewage in your playground or sewage in your kitchen, that's just unacceptable. Yep. And, and, and uh, but I, I don't want to lighten up on fire sprinklers and fire alarm systems and, and those type of things, but, uh, you know, because those are unacceptable as well. Right. And and I think what I'm looking, you know, there's there's a lot of things on the, you know, even to say safety and security, 
there's a lot of these things on this list, you know, even prioritizing within that sometimes can be a challenge, but even I could see the, uh, the, the replacement of the intercom system. And I know uh, that's, you know, I think about some kind of emergency situation, being able to pick up one phone and hit every single building on a campus, that type of thing. So certainly that um, it's where to prioritize within that list is I'm, I'm sure challenging, but I can appreciate the sewer being a priority that definitely falls under the safety umbrella without a doubt. So, um, yeah, those are, those are my thoughts. All right. Uh, director Q, you have your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I agree with Dr. Clark and, uh, director Pickens about the, the sewer. I mean, that it, you're right. That that's below a threshold of acceptability. The question about the gray wolf estimate as we're looking at it, uh, about 300,000, does that include any of the connection fees that we, um, have discussed with the county before? And I guess the cheap part B of that question is, have we heard back in any meaningful way about the county being willing to, um, either retroactively apply the lower fees or waive them entirely or uh, something in between? That's that's a conversation that was going to be had at the end of March. And if we all remember what happened at the end of March, yes. the conversation stalled. Yeah. So um, it probably needs to be re, uh, regenerated at some time. But I, if I look in my March calendar, I will see an appointment that I had with um, the county that just never transpired. Sure. Do we know if that estimate includes those fees or those? I will need to check on that. Okay. I can't answer that question. Well, you have a you have a legion here of uh, amateur statesmen. So uh, obviously, if there's anything this board can do, um, I, I'm. Pretty confident we're all willing to assist in those types of discussions as well. Okay, well, sounds like uh, you know, just uh, outside of just uh, you know, few um, moving of items or looking at items down the road, which uh, you know that conversation we had well down the road. I mean, you know, a lot of things could happen between now and let's say that first project comes along, we could have a roof cave in and all of a sudden that becomes top priority. So mm -hmm. um, as long as they're, uh, they're allocated. Um, yeah. uh, and can, we can Tracy, work. can we go to the uh, bottom of the page, please? Now, the, uh, does this have, oh, it does it, could, could you go to the other, this doesn't mine has a total at the bottom i thought it did could you go to the other spreadsheet please there should be two That's my error. I didn't email the second spreadsheet to uh, Tracy. The one thing that we do, if you add up everything and we do everything on this agenda, we're looking at approximately $16 million, okay. assuming all the estimates are accurate. If we want to run a capital projects levy at the millage that we currently have, which is Oh, I, I uh, somewhere around a dollar. It's a less than a dollar uh, per thousand for capital projects. We need to cut that down to about fourteen and a half million dollars. So there may be some of these things that do get removed or decreased. I, I didn't. I didn't respond to Director Koo or, and I think someone. I think Director Stopper mentioned it as well. I do think it behooves us in in for the areas of athletics, i.e. the gym floor, the track, 
the stadium restrooms um, that to uh, go out and and seek sponsorship or seek you know supplemental help and it may you know is is uh, an item that prop that should be pursued and um, the in, in fact right now with all the with some of the vandalism we've had in the year that I've been here it seems like the stadium restrooms get hit the most I just assume practically remove that facility from the grounds but that's a conversation for another day director Stoffer, did you have another question for me Yeah, Jim, you got your hand up there. Well, while we're waiting, uh, just real quick, and I'll just give you my thoughts. Director Ku had something in the chat regarding uh, the bonding. Um, again, I think that's a future conversation. Um, first thing we have to do is pass a uh, pass an actual levy and and get money in hand and look at what the needs are and if those needs are extreme in some areas then that's something that we look at at that point but i don't i don't even yeah i mean it's just my thoughts if it's mm -hmm. uh, a, a uh, kind of a pertinent discussion at this and point the other thing that i would add to that is interest rates right are i don't know you know every every time you listen to the Federal Reserve or you listen to those people, they say interest rates will never be any lower. And if you've refinanced your house, we yeah. refinanced ours in, I mean, July and the interest rates are lower than they were in July. So, um, I, but I don't know, you know, just mathematically, I don't know that they can get much lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. I going to find the unmute button there for a minute. Um, it, could we have the date that uh, we have to have a resolution to the county just so we have a can be thinking ahead of uh, meetings and the uh, time that uh, the board will need to really uh, put some thought on to uh, approving uh, resolutions? Thank okay, I, I will do that, but I can tell you right now, it's this, and I don't know the exact date, but it's the second week of December. But I will get that, and it will be in my board note tomorrow. Thank yeah. you. Okay, well, thanks for the presentation, and, um, you know, definitely uh, some needs there that we'll, we'll be looking at. Okay, next up, we have uh, um, the policy review calendar. A lot of work ahead. Well, this is something that the board has talked about at length for, <clears throat> you know, uh, literally since I've been on the board, uh, Assistant Superintendent Mon did a lot of work on that over the last couple of years, and, and uh, that is appreciated. Um, but it's something that, uh, you know, it, when, when Jennifer and I had a conversation, I, I, uh, I said, I, I really believe this is the superintendent's responsibility, uh, not the assistant superintendent. And I, that doesn't mean I'm not grateful for the work that she did. I, I just think this is a superintendent responsibility. Um, and this is something that, um, you know, Tracy and I have talked about, I'm going to say over the last, off and on over the last month. And we came up with this plan. Um, what Tracy set up was, you know, one Wednesday a month for the next 12 months, we would work on approximately 20 policies at a time, starting with the thousands. And her and I would do the initial legwork, bring those to the board. I, I think it needs to be a separate meeting. I don't, you know, um, and so this is all we talk about, a work, whether it's a meeting or a work session. 
This is our goal. I think it's ambitious, but I think it can be done if we all uh, agree that that's something that we want to do. I, this, this will be my fourth policy review, Reardon, Leavenworth, and Milton Free Water. And one of the other things that I believe is inherent in this policy review is that we bring in the practitioners who have to implement the policies and have to act on the policies. For example, when we're talking about finance, Darlene Applin needs to be at the board at, at this work session. When we're talking about transportation, Rich Fulmer needs to be at, at, at during talking about transportation. When we're talking about special ed, I think individually the longest single policy is about IDEA. Shelly Langston needs to be in these conversations. There's various curriculum issues that uh, Assistant Superintendent Mon needs to be involved in and, and so forth and so, and, and so on. And while policy development is the board's responsibility, we need to hear from those practitioners who are responsible for the implementation of the policy. And we, uh, Tracy and I will set those meetings up. Again, this is an ambitious goal, but I believe it can be done and I believe it needs to be done. Well, Director, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah, def definitely a lofty goal there, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll support in, in any way that we can. Um, I don't know if anybody, any of the fellow board members have any thing to say if you do just go ahead and raise your hand director two of course i'm the first one sorry yeah. um yeah no i i i laughed at the default aggressive approach to this but i support it and i say let's let's do it i had missed um for some reason the dates uh that falling on wednesday so 100 percent support that uh, uh segregating these uh from our regular board meetings because uh, this could be some exhaustive yeah. sessions and it is mm -hmm. it is what it is but it is our mandate and uh, it's the right thing to do i also acknowledge that you know we we pay good money to receive um legally reviewed policy updates from wasda so my only uh, i guess intrepidation is uh, i totally agree with having the resident uh, experts uh participate with policy updates um to guide how uh it may or may not affect their worlds um, you know, why it's important, perhaps, uh, I recognize the brilliance and execution of all this is with the professionals and the development of the procedures. Um, I guess my only thought, and, uh, you know, Larry, frankly, you, you've, I think, done a lot of work recently with policies, is as we bang through these, making sure we're not missing any interconnected, um, you know, areas of interconnectedness that would, um, would be perhaps a demonstration of excellence by this board to be cognizant of. Um, you know, I know everything's interconnected, but just making sure, you know, as we're going through that we're not missing those details. And that may be part of what we pay WASDA for. So um, that may be an unfounded fear, but that's just the only thought that comes to mind. But otherwise, like I said, default aggressive, love it. Let's do it. All right, D Director Jeffries. I agree with uh, Brian. I think we need to look and be careful. A lot of the WASDA model policies that come down to us are vetted and um, meet the letter of any law that might have changed. So I think we have to be careful turning that into a um, a policy or let's talk about it. What are you know, how can modifications that we might make to it because of this need or that need, which uh, might not be. A Good idea and I'm not it sounds to me like you're almost talking about procedures rather than policy and procedures the board doesn't have anything to do with I realize but um, my other concern is going through all the policies as a new board member I got very frustrated in some of the very old policies that supposedly maybe have been updated but never published and or just never got 
changed. Um, Brian mentioned WASDA. We could spend, well, I don't know how much money, another extra $3,000 or $5,000 in WASDA will do a policy review. But um, I'm not sure. I, this is a pretty daunting task. And it looks to me like the policies have been kind of put on the back burner for several years for whatever reason. And um, it's going to be a tough one to get them all up to date. So I appreciate the effort. and. Be glad to help out any way I can. Uh, uh, Director Jeffries, I can't speak to WASDA. We did one three of my fifth year in Milton, fourth and fifth year in Milton Freewater, <coughs> OSBA, the same as WASDA, and it was $6,500. And the board still had a tremendous amount of work. They they did a lot of the work that we're, we're going to expect out of Tracy. I, to, I, I'm guessing if we contracted out with them, and Jim might know better than I, but I, I think you're looking at around 10K. But I could, I, that's my own personal estimate. I could be wrong about that. Okay, Director Stuffer. Yes, I um, I don't have the figures right at the top of my hand. I know that um, uh, WASDA has recently updated it, um, and uh, it's I will I'll get those costs uh, sent out here tomorrow. Um, but I the thing that WASDA does offer, which doesn't cost us anything, is that they've been very robust at sending out the policy updates. I mean, we've been we've been getting some of them during the weekly was the networking call um, soon after. And so I, the policy department there under Abigail. Yeah, that right there. Thanks, Tracy. Um, those are coming out hot and heavy. And so I, I think those um, are a big plus and those don't cost us any extra. And and yet um, with checking cross reference. Um, was is tasked by the legislators of uh, doing the policies, um, but we as districts can make them take that template and make them particular to um, local control type things. So um, now we, yeah, we need to move forward on this. I think there's the other tools out there. I'll follow up with that other cost, but I, I think right now we we definitely have uh, the tools. Um, with this schedule, and, uh, and I always appreciate the work that uh, Tracy and uh, Assistant Superintendent Mon on this, and I like the idea of uh, those um, particular uh, department heads that it's in their their lane that they should be at the table um, reviewing it also, and then from there the procedures. So thank you. Yeah. Um the other thing that I would add that is consistent with what Director Jeffries and Director Koo, and I think it, in, a, in a matter of speaking, Director Stoffer said, most of the policies, I'm going to say 90% of the policies that WASDA uh, puts forth are the same or extremely similar in the 295 school districts in this state. There are probably somewhere between five and 10% of the policies that become unique to the individual school district. And they, they have a squim flavor. Maybe it's graduation requirements. Maybe it's facility use, uh, those type of things. The overwhelming majority are are e either extremely similar or exactly the same. Uh, Director Jeffries, do you have something else to add there? Yeah, just just real quick, uh, Tracy might know. I think the, the extra cost for policy and legal review is about eight hundred and fifteen dollars a year that we pay to WASDA, and it looks like for a district our size having them come in and do a policy review, at least at a, at a certain level, would be about 8,000. 
So it's something to look at because um, it's going to be quite a bit of work. But we had to, you know, check it all out. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And maybe this is a qu question for Director Stoffer. And and Tracy, you chime in. At one point, I think we pursued that, or and or Tracy pursued that. But at that time, I believe the WASA policy and legal staff was going. It was either in transition or had some employees who were on leave medical leave or maternity leave or something like that. And we really didn't get a very good uh, uh, response from our requests. And I believe that situation is uh, remedied. And is that accurate, Tracy? And then I'll, Jim, we'll get to you. That is 100% accurate. Um... We have not reached out to them since Director Stoffer mentioned that they had kind of revived their page and done some other things. I also think Director uh, Jeffrey's $8,000 estimate is correct as well. And basically the process is we do pay for model policies. And so we have access to everything that's on those policy and legal news. And we just download, do a compare and contrast for our current policies, those things that need to change, we change. and and um, Dr. Clark, you're correct too, about 95% is we, we really don't change. It's just a matter of upgrading the format, making them all, you know, look right and moving on. All right, Jim? Yes, I concur with all of the above. There, there was some uh, personnel changes and upgrades to WASDA and uh, adding more to the policy staff and uh, expanding their bandwidth and uh, um, and that's where I learned that they there was uh, updating prices on their site but I haven't spent a lot of time particular on it but yes we do Casey has the ability to download for the policy news of the latest and greatest so thank you all right thank you okay Moving on. Uh, so we've uh, been having conversation around uh, Superintendent Clark's evaluation and just, uh, you know format and how to go about that. And uh, Dr. Clark's got a few ideas. And then at some uh, once we're finished with this, we'll um, go into executive session and have further discussion on this topic. So, uh, uh, Superintendent Clark. Back to you. Well, um, I talked to a couple of my colleagues in in the area and to see how they were being evaluated. And I know, oh, I'm going to say within the last five to six years, while I was in Oregon, WASDA came up with some model superintendent evaluation uh, instruments that that didn't exist in my prior tenure in uh, the state of Washington. They have two. One is an outcome-based superintendent evaluation, excuse me, which you see here or which you will see. Could you bring that up, Tracy, please? Where, you got to get it a little bit bigger where you will you you meaning the board and the superintendent agree to x number of outcomes and get time frames and work on it and we meet periodically and i discuss the progress of those out of of those uh, goals and that's what I'm evaluated on. The other one is a standards based, and uh, I, I will tell you right now the standard based uh, evaluation. This is three pages long. Uh, the standards based is 52 pages long. And um, I would, and, and if you forget about the length of 
the, you know, three pages versus 52. They both have strong merits. I, I, I believe that the, sta- uh, excuse me, the uh, standards-based uh, evaluation is more appropriate for a superintendent earlier in his or her career. And that an outcomes-based evaluation is probably more appropriate for either A, a superintendent, a veteran superintendent, or a superintendent that has been in the position for several years. That's my opinion. I, I, uh, I'm not here to say that that's shared by my colleagues or anyone else. That's my opinion. I I favor this evaluation because it's kind of what we've talked about. And you say, you know, to a certain extent, here's outcome X, you completed outcome X satisfactorily above, you know, and, and, and we go on from there. I think the issue is agreeing on what the outcomes are and then there's the evaluation report form, and we go through that, and we talk about it, move forward from there. So I'm happy to take anyone's questions. Um, yeah, uh, it, anything from the floor, go ahead and raise your hand and... Uh anybody has anything uh director Koo. yeah just real quick i would concur and that's my assessment of the two uh, evaluation frameworks and their purpose as well um i heard that from a smart person at a WASTA conference um <laughs> and so given that i would fully support uh the superintendent's uh stated preference yeah i would agree and i know uh, i think director Koo, you and i were both um in a couple of those same uh workshops that was the last year and um and and we've you know the three of us have participated in the standard based in the past and it is very cumbersome uh you know that that we found and it's a lot to it um and uh it did seem from those those uh workshops that we attended as well that uh something on this format um was much much more um preferred and and was kind of the direction uh, that several were going so um, I would I would agree any other thoughts director Stoffer I'll just say ditto concur yep all right Okay, if that is all, um, let's see if I need my screen blown up. <laughs> um, yep, with that's if that's all, uh, if no other questions, um, then next up we will um, move into executive session. We have to go to a different. Uh, now, are we are we uh, jumping into another um, spot, Tracy, on this, or are we sticking where we're at? Uh, moving to another spot so we can, uh, uh, yeah, I yep. will go do like I did last time, kind of invite you all over. Okay, got it. Perfect. Okay. And uh, Director uh, Brandino, I want to be on there for about five minutes. Yep, yeah, yeah, yes. and then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll just we'll move into that, get us self started. Um, so uh, for any of those others that were in attendance, uh, thanks for attending. Um, so we will now be moving into executive session. Um, see you all over in the other screen somewhere. Is that the same link or is it a different link?